better, but I think EG is like the slightly better team based on recent results. But this draft has me very convinced. Of... Yeah. Drow without Puck, it's weak. They don't have a good way to seize high ground. Drow, not, I don't think Drow is a good building hitter uh, as when it comes to T3s, unless you get very far ahead, which is going to be very difficult considering. All Look right. at those levels. These guys are going to TI. <laughs> and they're it's, planning it's to play It's called investment, well. you know? Yeah. They're just putting some money uh, into their own pocket. They'll get a little, re you know, a little refund from good old Uncle Gabe at the end of the year. Oh, God, my settings are all out of whack. All right, hopefully we don't have any kale. Uh, it's looking really smooth for me, at least. Let me, please. Have they improved the Perfect World servers at all? Uh, I to, actually have no idea. I play in the perfect world server, and it's still... It's bad even for you? Less than desirable. Less than suboptimal, yeah. I believe, is the word of choice. Like, it, it's good for, you know, a while, and then you have, like, one week where I just have... Normally, I get 30 ping, and then that one week, I have 180, and I just don't get it. A little VV. What does the VV face mean? It's the big eyes. <laughs> It's it's like when your eyes are, it's kind of like the capital O underscore O, except a little bit different, because your expression is different. But it's it's well, the same emotion. So what if you have two lowercase v? Two lowercase v? I have no idea actually. All right. Gonna type it out to make sure. Well, <laughs> I got I gotta look at it, dude. Yeah. I'm a visual learner. I am all set here, Mr. Uh, Eric. I don't think we want to subject Ben to observing. Sure. I don't think you want to subject other people to my observing. Or to my observing. For that. <laughs> <laughs> we should have like an observer showdown. One yeah, time. observers are fun. really just like a thankless job most of the time. Oh yeah, how many if kills you miss, can you not yeah. miss? Well, if you miss a kill, it's just like T-Tours. But if you catch, you know, kills and base race, nobody says anything. Well, you know, PGL, like when they were doing the majors, started introducing that new feature where they introduce the observers, but you know, that can be really bad for the observer. Yeah. If you just have like a, an off game, all of a sudden... They should do it at the, the end of the game, right? straight to the top. At the end of the game, if he do, does a good job, then he introduces it. If yeah. you do a good job... Yeah, it should yeah. be a, a posthumous thing. Yeah. That's for sure. I like that idea with me. All right, so we'll get underway here. They are going to be running pretty standard lanes on OG. It's the safe lane Arc Warden. Ana are going to be going mid as the Invoker. Uh, looks like they might do dual lanes at least to start. S4 is the off lane Void. EG running that Drow safe lane. Uh, Sumail going to be playing the mid Storm, and then Universe on the off lane Shaker. So really no surprises at all when it comes to the lane setup here. Yeah, so I, I want to talk about uh, Zeiss Kunkka. I think at Manila Master, uh, I don't know if you were able to catch the the final game, but or final series. But EG, I I think Zai overall didn't play up to his potential. Um, but on the very final game when they pick his Kunkka, he he lit up. So I wonder if he was still carrying a bit of that. I think this is one of his best hero currently. Um, so I expect a lot of out of him this game, and he needs to do so. Like I think the Ana Invoker can be punished uh, by some good roams by the Kunkka earlier. Maybe maybe bring the IO in. Relatively early, if the opportunity presents itself. Yeah, I think I think Crit might be looking to stack though. We can just let the chat wheel cast for us, Lumi. We don't really have to do anything anymore. Yeah. It's got some good lines. I wonder. I wonder how many people out there can unlike, are fluent in all three languages. You know, what percentage of the. Dota population is that. That's where you can really have all the fun. Good D ward here by OG to get things underway. So Sumail going to be a bit sad as Jerax with the Arctic Burn able to get some good chip harass damage in. So far, TZ just on his own in this top lane while we will see some early pulls by Crit on the IO to go for the D ward. Unfortunately, missed it because it is a lane ward, not a a direct camp block, so they'll have some good vision here early on, and perhaps OG can punish that. You get nothing. So, thoughts on the lanes, Lumi? Any, anything surprising you? Anything this, exciting you? This is my first time seeing Winter Wyvern uh, sitting mid as, like, kind of a four-position harasser. On paper, he's not very good for that, right? Because Arctic Burn is such a long cooldown spell, so you can't you can't spam it out, but it seems like what he's doing... What Look, look at Jerax, he's just... Pulling mid creeps into the jungle, farming it up. He's taking Invoker's experience right now, but hey. 
That Jurax level too, though. It's the it's the tax that all the the good four position players are levying nowadays. Ke or uh, Yapsor, perhaps most notably, <laughs> feels like every game like his mid dies and then he just takes over the mid lane. You know, gets a couple free waves. Hasn't done the pulling. Yeah, but uh, Arctic Burn is such an in impressive harassing ability because you, you all, all you need to do is apply the burn and it just deals majority of damage. And I, I think that's why it's such a powerful harassing ability early on. Uh, more you, you see it more zoning out of the offlaner, but it's definitely a very interesting application for, for Sumail in the mid lane. What is the, the game plan for the Arc Warden for OG? Like with the, the pickup of the Invoker, um, you're not like so reliant on the Arc Warden as your main carry. Does that change at all how you want to play around it? I think Arc Warden can be played as a high tempo space creator. At least that's how he's been playing it, No Tail. Oh, Mid. Sumail in all kinds of trouble. OG bring him down with the Cold Snap. Dodge the Sunstrike, but didn't matter. So early punish there on the Storm. On paper, it looks like Storm would get a lot of help early with the Drow Aura. Maybe the IO coming in, but in practice so far, yeah. he is under the gun. Do Arctic Burn plus Cold Snap. That is, that is really oh. nice. You wanted a big game from Zai, you do get yeah. it, but it's not enough damage, unfortunately. Ana, he's afraid of that follow-up torrent in five seconds, it seems, he wants to play it safe. I'm just going to follow your camera, Aldi. I don't even know why I'm looking at my screen. <laughs> I didn't even see that torrent. In your defense, Lumi, you don't have the most ergonomic setup in the world, so I'll cut you some slack for that. Yeah. <laughs> but you have a computer, which is pretty impressive for the guy in the middle. Yeah. Normally the middle guy gets the shaft. Can you think of a situation where it's better to be the middle guy? Like, middle seat on the airplane is always the no. worst. You know. middle, middle spoon. Ben, ben chimes in with middle spoon. Yeah, I guess it's like potentially... Like if it's really cold. sex maybe. You know, depending on how you swing. That went from 0 to 100 really fast. I mean, spooning's like 50. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's 0 to 100. You can have a very platonic relationship. A platonic spoon. It's still spoon. a very intimate experience, Lenny, okay? But a plat platonic spoon, it's fine. Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> things looking pretty good here so far in the mid lane. A lot of pressure on Ana, but still see us well. To manage to score that first blood on Sumail. And it looks like Universe did have to make the journey back home. So he's out of the lane. That's going to free up the supports here. As the wraparound cometh, looking for the pick off on Ana. He's quite low. Torrent having a fish a bit off the mark, even oh. with the slash through. Double. Not quite enough on the Tidebrainer to get the kill there, but a good effort. I like how Anna was like getting killed and he just went back for the last hit. He's like, yeah, I got 10 HP, it's fine. But does he have regen coming out? He needs a salve or something. I think the Couriers... Everyone's so low on OG yeah. here. Like, Jerex is almost dead. Anna's about to fall. Did have to ferry out another salve, so... Big Wait. commitment, but now Sumeli's been baited in. The Stretch Armstrong Shackles coming out and fly. Scores the kill. Sunstrike's there for Anna. And the route is on in this middle lane. Test. Sumel is getting uh -huh. punished. We hear you, Ben. Oh, okay, nice. Hi, Ben. Hello. So this storm is as uh, predicted. Dude, OG was looking like a bunch of beggars. <laughs> what? I what? Was, uh, like they were all hunting around the T1, like at 10% HP. Like, self -please, give please, me some self -please. of that XP. <laughs> yeah, they, were, they were afraid of the flank as well. They should be. But meanwhile, top lane EG putting the pressure on S4. Going to force him back. Not CSing particularly well, but neither is Mr. Universe, and he's getting his level so far. Universe going for some of these cheeky side pulls, so the off lane's a bit of a wash, it looks like. Both cores farming freely. It's really just these kills on the mid lane where the main difference has been made. That cold snap on Sumail, though, they continue to pound into him, dropping him low, and oh, oh my god. god, my ears are about to explode. Shit. They will bring down the Storm Spirit. Meanwhile, <laughs> Zai, Sunstrike nets them another. It's a twofer in the mid lane. Uh, I can confirm my ears are still working. You know it's not a Chinese event if there is not some... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we can blame China for that one. <laughs> I mean, we could try. All right. You, didn't, you, know, you weren't trying hard enough to blame them. LT. Oh, Is this where we want to put the production crew name at the start of the broadcast? <laughs> oh, here we go in the mid lane. OG just chasing after Mr. Zai. This tri lane mid has been very troublesome. They thought about backing, but with the shackles coming through, they want to commit on Zai, uh, but they don't commit uh, quite enough. Now the tether comes through from crit. Fly drops low. The torrent slightly off the mark for him, but perhaps they'll get the juicier kill as Ana running away. There's a TP to the Shrine Universe. Cuts him off with the Fissure. Nice takedown there. Can they get more on Jerex? X is going to pull him back across the ravine, up onto the cliff. 
Cold Embrace won't save you, my friend. He shatters as well. EG able to grab two more in return. And now Sunstrike. Sunstrike? Oh, a bit off the mark. So I think OG went a little bit too early there. They had like three seconds off of Arctic Burn or five seconds off of Arctic Burn. Had they had Arctic Burn, that was 100% kill. But they didn't. They lose a girl on the, on the way back, so... Midas uh, now being worked on here for Ana, who's starting to drop quite a bit in the CS department. And OG, they're going to abandon that trial lane mid now. They make the move on the top. Arteezy is the target. They've got the tether coming through. They lock him in position with the shackles as well. But maybe need one bash from S4 to secure this kill. Gets the gust pushback. Now on the run as Jerex has been pulled back into tower rage. Might end up drying here, dying here. Uh, cold Embrace. Keep him alive a bit longer, but they've overstayed their welcome. Now Sumail's on the hunt. Looking for Fly. He's a bit low on Mana, though. The Torrent comes through. It's slightly off the mark. Nails the creeps, but that's it. And now the ball forward. Commitment for Fly. Good hex by Fly. Juking through the trees. Tries to retreat. Not gonna happen. Zai cuts him off with the sword. And now the Sunstrike gets the counterplay. Ana will find a much-needed kill. And also, some free pressure on this tower mid. So one Midas up now for the Arc Warden. And another about halfway there to the recipe for Ana. They're getting a lot of good rotations with the Wisp to help, but at the same time, OG are pressing their luck very close to the T1 towers. At the same time, I didn't really expect them to be able to be this aggressive early. So all in all, I still think it's a pretty good sign for uh, OG. I thought they were going to be very, very greedy, but they're getting away with it. They're winning their early game yeah. uh, despite going for Midas's and putting a lot of pressure, forcing EG to TP in and do things they don't really want to do. EG have made a smoke rotation now. Swinging through the river, leading with Zai. Maybe looking for Ana. There is no Chrono yet, though. Universe gets close. So if you ever wanted to make this move on mid, now is probably the time before the Chrono is available. They commit on the Invoker, pulling him back with the X. But he's got the Ghost Walk ready. EG not prepared with detection by the looks of things. So Ana will just slip slide away. Yep. Almost gets crit on the way back. Guess not, maybe not expecting that early point in Wex. Look how many wards they have in mid. They have three wards all around Ana, but Ana's still gonna have his thing pretty early, his Midas. Not to mention bottom lane, look how many wraiths are set up around this tower. It's like a, a poor man's Venno, you know, it's just this lane is just infested with traps right now. You say poor man, I think this is uh, like well, a better it's Venno. It's gonna be yeah. a richer, yeah. richer than a Venno, that's for sure. Is it going to be the opposite of a poor man's shield? What is, what, would you, what is the opposite of a poor man's shield, Ben? A rich man's shield? Is, rich that, man's shield? is that a trick question? Or I, I don't know. He's, he brought it up. He said the opposite of a poor man's shield. Thought he had something in mind. Clearly I was wrong. I'm going to now have Chrono available, so any movements by EG could be punished if they're not careful. Relocate, not yet available. Crit getting close to it, but not quite there yet. Sumail, after that early rotation, not amounting to all that much, has found himself slipping quite far down in the net worth department. He'll need some comeback assistance here, and EG supports perhaps looking to make that move there. Can't be now. This arcane rune, at least for now. Sumail continuing to drop down those remnants. I mean, so far, so good for OG. They've got a pretty decent net worth advantage and experience as well. 1,000 on each, and with double Midas coming out, that is going to accelerate rapidly. Unless EG makes an adjustment soon. Yeah, and I think it's somewhat harder for EG to actually get the punishes. Like, normally when you see double Midas, you could play in a certain way to, you know, attack them early, but Storm hadn't had a good early game. Drow... I mean, still is like an item away before she could actually safely push tower. So I, I don't actually know what EG could do to like begin a mini comeback. Oh, so Mel may be getting punished again in the mid lane. He won't make it out. Fly is there with the support from Ana. He saw the Shaman mid, saw the core Arcord moving top and figured it was safe to post up in the river, but Sumail was wrong, and OG, they've now got the Shaman Wards, they're about yeah. to get this tier 1 top, it looks like they might be able to get a tier 1 mid as well, and that would be a huge boost in map control with that moving forward. Oh man, Jirax could mango his friend, could mango fly, and they could have dropped wards there, but I guess uh, worked out for the best, because they would not have worked. Once that Sol Rain Lumi. Big oh. jump in by S4. Oh. 
quick. I think you quick. definitely need Soul Ring on whatsoever. His spells are so expensive. Yep. And he does not have that much regeneration. He wants to get an urn by the looks of it too. He's keeping that uh, infused ranger out in his backpack, so it's gonna have a uh, quite a bit of mana regen. So net worth lead is about 1,000 for OG, but keep in mind they have two Midas's, so it actually should be slightly in favor of EG. But EG aren't even close to being able to come come to towers right now. They do right. have relocate up on Wisp, but no opportunity to do so. They will need Shaker Blink, I think, before they can make like really big moves, or for OG to overextend at the towers. But that's pretty hard when you have uh, Master Serpent Wars. Master Serpent Wars pushing towers is generally pretty safe. And OG really want to push it now. They do have those wards online. They're grouping up with S4. When Jerex out in front, Haystrun, allowing Jerex to play aggressive, does have to beware the X, though. He looks really cool when he sees it. I don't know if I've seen the Haystrun. Which one? Jerex, Jerex always looks cool. So cool. So cool. How do you defend this? Like, you have wards in the front, you, an you army can. of Wraith in the back. You, you have to play around the cooldowns, right? That's that's the, the best way for EG to try to punish. With what items? Yeah, that's the tough thing. Their storm's so poor. They have no blink on the shaker yet. Is that what EG's is? Are they just like stuck in farm mode for now, guys? Do you like when? When can they turn it up a notch? I'm looking at their items. Storm's still very far away from Bloodstone. That's definitely a big item. Drow Ranger has Pike soon, but I don't really think that matters. It's definitely Earthshaker blink. That's yeah. the one that's the closest and the one that's going to make a big, the biggest difference. So that's 700, 800 gold away. Not a big deal, but. You're going to have this issue very soon where No Tail is going to be able to like be very, very strong with his illusions. He's he's like in his ramping up phase. Once he gets his Maelstrom, he's going to be pretty powerful. He didn't go BOTs, though. Maybe thinking that uh, they can get a lot of the split push done with Ana, who will almost certainly eventually go BOTs. But this is one of the few times I have seen a phase boots arc order. Yeah, no bots for him. Yeah, I think he just... I think they know that they have the late game. They just need to survive the early game, right. not lose any towers, and the phase boost damage might give them that little bit of extra boost. I mean, if the game goes late enough, he, he could definitely go back to switch it out. But I, I think it's correct to go for the, the much easier to build item to fight, because the fight should be coming relatively soon from EG. EG with a smart scan are gonna detect somebody behind that tower bottom, and indeed it is the Wyvern who pops out now looking for the surprise S4 there, trying to cut off Arteezy, did get the push back. Say it stays alive at least for now, courtesy of the Gust, but now Universe trying to TP out. He'll also escape. So good defensive play there by the Shaker. Gets him away to safety, but just have to credit OG at the same time. Doing such a good job at defending these outer towers. Already taken down the tier one mid for EG, the top as well. So the Roche control certainly in their favor at the moment, and they are not going to give that tower gold up freely. They will deny this one bottom, and well, last tick going to... It's really hard to break OG's T1s right now. They're very ready to defend, and like they have heroes sometimes just sitting there. And also, EG don't have good vision around there. Like, yeah. They have one in the bottom jungle close to the bounty rune, but it's not like they can really make a smoke play around there. They'll, they'll get annihilated if they get caught out as five inside of smoke. I just think that it's so hard to push OG's tower because of their abilities, right? Chronosphere punishes you when you're grouping up. Sumail wants to bait out one of those abilities, perhaps, and it's going to be the Winter's Curse that finds him. Crit is there with the tether, the overcharge, keep it alive, oh but now God. the Chronosphere is the trump card. Ward's placed just to the side of it. Sumail somehow able to ball out to the left and back to the right. He survives through it all. Well, they force out quite a few ults. They only lose the Io. Not the worst exchange in the world for EG, though the tower takes no damage. And OG still defends. That was actually pretty good for EG. Like, they got two big ults for one. Trying to punish. Fly gets caught here. Sumail, the comeback kid, is in town. We'll find that fly kill. Walking blind uphill. He went away with like 20% no mana. Pops a regen, everyone gets a kill. Now still has the regen. And then bottom. Shaker gets to finish this blink. I think EG, off the back of like two minutes of solid play, they're. I don't want to say they're back in the game, but they're definitely looking more alive than they. Did like two minutes ago. I can't believe Stormsteer survived there. Yeah. Well, did they throw a sun strike on him as well? Uh, it was during the curse. Oh, okay, so that's probably it. Zai going for the TP out here. No tell. Doesn't have the damage to bring him down. So make it back to safety. The Arc Warden though, staying up there in the 
net worth department. Closing in on his early Maelstrom, so heavy damage to be dumped into the Chrono. See the Vlads build up for S4. Trying to be more of that team fight utility offlaner. Give more space to the cores. Nana now working on his Ags. And Ben working on his Funyuns. <laughs> uh, overall, Lumi, is there anything really surprising about the way the game's unfolded? Something you would want to, you know, potentially change uh, um, for OG or EG at this point? Just OG needs to be careful with their the combo, right? I totally forgot about the curse downslide, which is... I mean, they, they stunned the storm for like a good five seconds, but it doesn't matter if you can't kill him, so... Probably need to curse, and then as the curse is running out, Chrono on top to guarantee the kill. But if the Storm die there for EG, I think this game is almost guaranteed to be OG's. But given that didn't happen, he got a return kill. I think this is... Uh, and he's got a Bloodstone right, now, actually. 17 minutes. Brand new game, I think. I think EG has really like gone over the hump. Yeah, their CS is actually very, very high on the Drought in the, in the Storm Spirit. There's a lot of control for the Storm, but there's quite a bit of long cooldowns as well, right? Like the Winter's Curse, that's a pretty sizable cooldown. The Chrono's obviously very long, so until the Shaman gets a blink, he might not always be able to catch Sumail if he plays his cards right. So look for Universe to try and debut this Echo Slam. He finds two, locking down the boy. Can they burst him before he's able to counterplay this? No, he gets the Chrono. The lockdown crit, holding Universe in position as well. Now the Meteor rains down, they counterplay it well. They get three, they might grab four. Sumail gunning for Fly, balling to the left. He wants a little more, but Ana's gonna chunk him down. Now S4 gets involved, needs a lot of bashes to deal with Arteezy, the help of these wards. Will it be enough? Jerex comes in, Drow slinks away to the left, but hounded by the Void. Unable to Shadow Blade out of there as it was on cooldown. They'll end up grabbing four in the end, five counting Sumail, who will respawn almost immediately. Where the hell is Jarek? Yeah, he wasn't there in that fight. <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly what I was thinking. If there was one curse or a good co embrace, I think they win that fight like very handily. But, yeah. I mean, it wasn't terrible for EG because even though they lost the fight, they didn't lose any objective out of that one. They did lose Bloodstone charges though. Right, that's the. Uh, I guess, perhaps even more costly than objective. And, uh, I mean, granted, you ex probably expect the Blink at this point, but that was the Blink debut for Universe, so... He is gonna walk up to high ground here now, and straight into the waiting arms of S4, but he gets the stun off, and now Sumail looks to punish, lunging forward onto the Wyvern. Not able to fully finish him off before that curse comes out, but it's only on crit for now. No Tail sets up, the Meteor rains down, they'll get the follow-up kill. S4 time walks off so much damage, stays alive. This Hammerhead Shark man is a... Uh, Difficult takedown. Now they're looking for Zion in the river, but Universe is there. A well-placed Fissure, a Gust as well. A Tor, two, it connects on three. Sumail pounces it again. Fencing in another fight, continues to find these pickoffs. Looking for Ana, who now has to drop the Ice Wall, look to retreat. S4 holding the back lane, but not a whole lot he can do without the Chrono. The Forge Spirits, though, doing so much damage. Zion's been caged in by them. One more time walk, and this Void could explode, but no, he won't get it off. Sumail able to finish him in time. Might have died there to the Forge Spirits in the Void otherwise, but from nine Bloodstone Charges right back up to 13. And now, into the Roach Pit. Oh, that was a pretty sick game plan from EG. They didn't actually care that they lost that many heroes on the bottom lane. They just wanted to fight immediately after, because yep. they used like three or four ulties for that. And if they get Aegis for Storm here... Shaker's also owning really hard these fights. Like, his, his fissures into any follow-up, like, they, we saw a three-man fissure into three-man torrent that fight, which just destroyed OG. If you look at it, OG's catch is not that good until they get Blink Daggers, right? Like, Void's pretty short range, Shaman is really weak in that department, and unless the Wyvern sneaks in with the Glimmer Cape, which isn't farmed yet, he's unlikely to catch you off guard. Like, they're much better at counterplaying fights, not at starting them. And that's where Shaker can really shine. It's also very punishing when you do miss those catch. Like, for example, if you compare it to EG's catch, they draw a Torrent, they draw a Fissure, it's so long range, it's so safe. Whereas OG really commits with, like, Rasa walking, shackling, or just throwing out Chrono. You miss those spells, you're just done. And I think uh, in, in the last fight, there was a little bit of that. EG on the prowl now, moving through the Radiant Jungle. Universe oh. there again with the donkey catches out to the Fissure, the Torrent, the boat coming in, but S4 is able to time walk it off. They only lose one so far, the Shaman, but he gets pulled back by the exit into that boat. EG will find the follow-up kill, and now maybe looking for more crit. Able to make it out of this fight for a bit. He will end up dying, and now No-Tail jumping in with the Illusion. That will get picked off. They've lost three on the northern end. Sumail did find Jerax as well, so EG again getting the jump. Finding clutch fight after clutch fight, and OG 
Really, it seems like the vision is where they're struggling right now, gentlemen. Definitely so. I also thought that Arc Warden would be a bigger factor at this point in the game, considering how much early farm that he had. But he's actually number four in net worth now. And his illusion just dies very, very rapidly. I think he's fed up to like three to four of his illusions now, which is like 180 a pop. That's that's a lot of gold. I, I wonder if his, I guess, lack of contribution is due to the item that he's going for. Like Maelstrom is decent for pushing out the wave or, or hitting a support, but like if you're trying to kill the storm, I, I wonder if rushing a quick orchid might be just better in this situation. Even scarier for OG. Sumail up to 15 Bloodstone charges and still has the Aegis. OG are feeling the heat now as they smoke up. They're moving deep into blue territory here. Gonna try to get a deep ward down. Still no Blink on Shaman, still no Glimmer on Jerax. OG's initiation quite limited. They really need to get the jump, but the thing for them is they're going into this Bloodstone, so if they blow too many ults, even if they kill the storm once, can they kill him a second time? And if they don't kill him once, well, then it feels like they're in a lot of trouble. Arteezy very close to walking into the sentry ward, but doesn't actually do it. Well, they lose the tower for free, so they know something's up. I mean, the other thing, Lumi, you mentioned, like, no no Orchid or really utility provided by the Arc Warden, but he's not really able to as easily join the team with the spill either. With the, he's going for that. The face boots instead. Yeah, that's true. Radiant's top tower is under attack. I mean, there's no excuse. All the fights that OG has taken is like by their shrines or next to all the towers, right? So a, a TP scroll should suffice. But as the game drags out, yeah, the lack of BOT will, will hurt him too. He's going back for BKB. Very combat focused build here on the Radiant's Arc Warden. Very mid game Radiant's itemization. Though, you know, I guess the argument you guys have made as well if they get to late game, they're in great shape anyway. Yeah, maybe not if this storm is as fat as it looks like he's going to be. He's just going to be able to take down this tower for free. Radiant Sumail launches the head to number one position in net worth. S4 is still parked behind there looking for... Uh, I mean, they don't really need a fight right now. EG can pressure a T3 while OG think about pressuring a T1. So this maneuver not going to work out for OG here. Well, they're trying to take that tower down. Forge Spirits laying into the tier one tower on the high ground. No tower. Just Yo, Shaker just jumped in. I think he's looking at cancel TPs. Oh. Tornado comes through. EG with the counterplay. Trying to lock down. No time, but the Chrono is there. A nice catch by S4. And this could hurt EG quite a bit. Sumail low. Still has the Aegis to work with, though. And now turning back for the Void. He'll shatter him. He will lose his Aegis. Round two commences with Arteezy. Be controlled during this time by the Cold Snap. Forced away. Sumail going for the jump. Does he have the pull? No, it's on cooldown. So Ana makes it out. And in the end, uh, three for three there, including the Aegis. But Sumail will keep his Bloodstone charges now up to 18. We'll get some wards as well, or at least try to, as they're denying themselves. Nice. Good micro by Fly. So I think what happened there was EG was pressuring the tier three. Um, how much damage did it get on? Oh, just Almost a little bit. Done. He yeah. cast magnetic field. And then, and then I think Shaker wanted to jump in to like cancel TP slash start the fight. And then uh, the relocate came in. Unfortunately, Arteezy wasn't there at the beginning of the fight. If he was, I think they were, you know, that, that fight could have been uh, much better. The wards also were just a position really well where yeah. EG had to like constantly tank them to fight. So Storm's getting massive though. This Orchid's yeah. causing a lot of issues for the Arc Warden, for the Shadow Shaman. They can't really do any fight in. The Winter Wyvern shows himself to Kapal Cold Embrace, and he's also dead very early on in the fight. Look how far up Crit's playing on the IO. Just knows there's not a whole lot to catch him. Shaman Blink still a, a forlorn dream for Fly. S4 recognizes they need one, and he is about to get his, so the Void Blink's ready. That's all they have is they will set up here on the bottom lane with the Winter's Curse coming through. The Meeple countered oh. by this Yule Scepter of Universe. Will he make it out, though? Cold Snap blocking him down. Deafening Blast finishes him off. So OG, they net a nice kill there. Don't overcommit for it either. I'll have a little time to pressure this bottom lane. You gotta be careful about initiating with curse like that because um, as you curse, you're not taking damage. So there are some instances where you could just straight up blink out of a curse as well. Uh, Shaker didn't get the blink off there, but he had creeps. But nothing's damaging, right? Uh, oh, you mean you mean the enemy creeps are? Yeah, I don't yeah. know what happens if it's Winter's curse through. 
Like yeah. if you just have a curse just for a lockdown, I mean, they just yeah. blink out of that. So. Arteezy, he's out quite far here. No tell, looking to cut him off, and now the Chrono deploy, but the IO is revving up for the big save. Oh. Crit brings back to safety, so Chrono expended. The Shaker's gonna respawn. They've dropped down the magnetic fields here to cover their own heroes, but Zai lurks in the trees right now. They're waiting for the IO's grand well, they return. See, oh, they see Zai but the whole too. squad's coming in. This could really backfire. Zai up on the high ground. Crit stays alive. Universe lunges forward. Look for the Fissure to start it off. Actually, it's the boat coming through. It's Sumail over the top. Locking down no We'll finish him off pretty early here. Now looking for more. Good blink out by S4. Back to safety. EG, stay alive. 19 Bloodstone charges still, and they continue chase. They can pull S4 back in if they've got the mana for it. Remnants there, the Yule Scepter, buying them time for this Fissure to come through. Torrent connected as well, and oh S4 will pop. Three down. No Chrono ready, and EG with the Drow. They want to go high ground here. Arteezy found more. Oh. No, the dunk from Universe. That's a full five-man wipe, and EG. It's time for a lane of Rex, they say. Persistent little buggers. They'll have to buy back here a No-Tail to try and hold. But there's not too much the Arc Warden can do on his lonesome already. The Illusion finished off, and EG take their first lane. Just that, the Drown Ranger might be looking for a second. Well, EG made this look pretty easy, I would say. It, they had a, it wasn't easy, though. <laughs> they made it look easy. Yeah, they made it look easy. The, the crit, that save. Okay, saving will relocate against Chronosphere is so hard because if you time it too too soon, then your hero bumps into the Chrono and you're trapped in the Chrono as well. If you time it too late, then the relocate doesn't get off and both of you guys still die. He timed that perfectly. Even though Zai got found, he still got off his spell. Somehow, after crit came back in, he still didn't die even though they parked like three Spark Wraith on top of him. I don't know how EG did it, but I guess that's why they're like the best team in the world. It, you just can't ever count out the Sumail Storm. You know, no matter yeah. how bad the game looks, no matter how much you gank them early. Like, I, I still remember that DAC 2015 Grand Finals. I think it was Game 3 or Game 4, uh, where Sumail died like three or four times. And speaking of which, uh, he's just found Fly very deep with this uh, ward that they've set up. So good pick for him. I thought and this he still came was going to do a lot better. Like, what, 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 has, what has he done? I'm not sure. What has he done and c could he have done more? Is, is what I'm... Cause we don't really see this hero picked that often, aside, like, wait, I think, what, Faces have picked him a couple of times, OG have picked him by far more than any other team, but it's... Well, big fight breaking out here, somehow Sumail survives, they'll finally bring him down, they end up monster kill streak, could be the start of a comeback for OG now as they find two, almost an instant respawn for Sumail, though he's gonna be up in one second, he'll be coming right back in, Ana, on the run, the boat won't let him escape, though Zai finishes him off, and now maybe chasing for a bit more. S4 is made it back to safety. So yeah, three dead. And then uh, I guess the question where we left off is, what else could this Arc Warden have done? I'm not sure, but it just, it, like his net worth was like 10,000 like 15 minutes ago. Yeah. Not 15. I don't, I don't like think Maelstrom was the right choice. I'm going to stand by the Orchid that I think Orchid would have would have done much then more. Then he doesn't have any damage, though. Any right click. I guess I guess I mean, was a little bit, but... The counterpoint to the Orchid is, like, if you look at the verse of the team, there's so much stun already. Like... You should be able to just lock lock down whoever and provide a little bit of damage to get the kill. But the, the way that it plays out is that Sumail just isn't dead. Sumail has gone for a blink dagger here on the storm, by the way. <laughs> is this like, why not? Styling BM or? I think it's styling BM. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, nice, <laughs> Evie. Now you don't. Nice okay. corner cape. Nice save. Good job, Bajerex. Keep him alive. That's that. That's BM. that. Okay, well, you didn't get the kill, so it wasn't BM. It's still BM. <laughs> I think buying Blink Sagger on Storm Everett is BM. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's literally zero situations where that's a good idea. <laughs> I mean. I mean, the thing is, Blink Dagger is just such a good item in general that I, it's not like the worst way to spend your gold, I would say. There are worse. <laughs> there are worse items. I Doesn't mean... mean it's the best item. Dodge that chrono, you know. It there's, is really good no, for dodging chrono. There's no chrono. cast animation. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's the one thing. That's the like. best part about it. This game. Yeah. Other than that, though, I can't really see a whole lot, because you could also just have a BKB at this point if you're Sumail and just go in, just tank tank the chrono with BKB yeah. on. OG are quite light on the physical damage here. That's what Archon was supposed to do. Not with this build. Oh my God, Sumail just going deep to the tier fours. Easy ball in. Does this qualify as BM enough for you? Oh, that's strategic. 
Space created for the Roche. Jeez. Dude, OG is super spooked. They drop like 25 centuries in their base. It's like, where the hell is this war? Tornado! Perfect catch! EMP! Can anyone get the head oh. far? With the Chrono! Oh, just the way the ground! Go, Roche should actually go the way of the Dire, but the Aegis is snatched by S4. Now the real fight breaks out. Good relocate save. Setting up Sumail for round number two. He jumps in, but inside of the Magnetic Field, no tell stays alive. The BKB protects him. OG not ready to give this game up yet. They have lost two. All they've gotten out of it is an Aegis snatch, and they've blown the Chrono, so EG... Presumably can just go back for a lane of Raxia with the Fissure coming through. Uni wants a bit more Enchant Totem, locking down Ana. He will fall, and now S4 on the retreat. So, well, a noble effort, gentlemen, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough. Stupid. And your voice out of here, so you could tank again. <laughs> yeah. And he gave cheese to Ana. Oh, did he actually pick that up? Yeah, he picked up. Okay. All right. All right. I... I mean, they're still about to get Mega. Such a doubt, Lumi. Clearly, Samir, go in and blink out. <laughs> <laughs> the offensive blink dagger. Classic Storm Spirit play. Actually, all the previous times that destroyed the building, uh, No Tail wasn't alive. And the, the fact that he's alive to put these shields on this building, maybe he'll. You could delay it long enough. They're so fat. Doesn't matter if you can't hit the building, right? You can stand on top of it. Okay. That's why you get the blink, dude. You can blink inside of the <laughs> Hit it once. field. <laughs> you just face tank. It's fine. The blink dagger helps you with that. Not really. Martel doing what he can to slow this down with those pesky little spark rates. Oh my god. All right, Sumail. Calm down, my friend. <laughs> Catch off fly here. I don't think it's enough for the kill. The glimmer cape again by Jerex with the cold embrace. Paying dividends. So keep heroes alive from that cheeky little base dive play. But still EG. Getting onto the towers here, the magnetic field. A bit late, the glyph was already committed, so... Not ideal for OG. And I'll go for the siege again. I wonder how well Arc Warden has been working out for them in scrims. They had a win or two here or there with it uh, at some of the previous events, so... It's had some successes. Okay. But they didn't catch crit here on the IO. He could prove problematic going for the relocate. And again, he times it right. Arteezy stays alive. And now it's Dawn to Universe. Three hero echo. Boom, crashing through. Beautiful connection from EG. They've got OG on the run. The green dream is about to die. They just need a little more mana on Sumail. Balling for it. He does blink up. And that's where the blink dagger pays for itself, Sumail <laughs> says. That's why I bought it. Easy jump forward, even without the mana. He'll find the Ana kill. Two for her fallen and GG. Well, it's all EG here on Independence Day. Truly an American victory. So did we did we underestimate what EG's draft could do, or do you think that EG just outplayed OG? Even though OG had like big laning lead. I feel like it's a bit of both. A bit personally. of both. Like that you mentioned like they outplayed the Chronos really effectively. Sumail that one time where they kept him alive inside of Chrono and then he got out with the regen rune, got the free kill and fly. I think that's probably where the game really turned and you, that's not just like a hero matchup thing, that's also EG just outplaying them. But Arc Warden, though. But Arc Warden. But Arc Warden. Are uh, we going to see more Arc I, Warden? I don't know. I just, like, my concept of the hero is just, it's just, what does that hero do well? It's just well? a big question mark. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I, sometimes I just see it destroy everything, and then sometimes I see it do nothing. And it's not net worth dependent, I feel like, a lot of the time. Like, sometimes he has so much net worth and does nothing what I thought this, this game. Yeah, I mean, because we talked a bit about the Arc Warden items, but to me it felt like less, uh, oh, there was one item he definitely could have gone for that would have won them the game, and more, what does he buy this game? How does Arc Warden actually have a big game? I, I think going for the BKB is a good idea because every fight Storm just jumps on him, but the, by the time that he got it, they were already losing too many fights. Uh, the vision uh, that you guys brought up was like they lost two, three fights in a row in their own jungle without vision because Shaker just gets to walk up and get a three man echo every time. I don't think that that should be allowed. Universe just got all the yeah. initiations in the world. I mean, the last ban was Beastmaster, right? So maybe that's that was EG's ban. Oh, that was EG's OG. ban. Okay, yeah. but yeah, OG didn't really have a great a great vision hero this game. Maybe that comes back to bite them a little bit in the end. Spark rates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they picked, Again, uh, you, you, Ben, you even ended that statement with the question mark. Spark Wraiths. And OG end the series with questions. Uh, we do have more Dota coming up, guys. It's going to be an all LGD showdown, so I'm sure Ruru... I don't know who Ruru roots for in this Ruru. one, but... Who does Ruru root for? When either way. I think maybe is her boyfriend. Really? I believe. 
I don't know. How, how many about? boyfriends does she go through? Maybe I'm just quoting she, her right. She has... She is... Jack? Is that true? Jack? We, we need Jack, Jack here to uh, get us the full, like... Yeah. Like, the full I, I'm history just, of I'm just of a discount, Jack. I, I, don't, I don't actually know all this. I can have another look at some of these fights early on where things looked so good for OG, but this then the Sumail yeah. got the regen rune off, ended up getting the solo kill on Fly, who was a little, little over eager walking uphill, oh. and then EG just kept on having these fights where the Io would save someone, the Shaker would come in for the big Echo, for the most part, even if a few heroes died during the Chrono. What do I was pushing top? I see him right now. Yep. TP I on see CD. him. Oh my god. TP on CD, we dude. got TP you, Jerex. They actually want